DreAllDay.com. DreAllDay.com. Today, in the overseas basketball blueprint, the topic is we're going to go through the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps of the overseas basketball blueprint process. From step one through step nine, I'm going to tell you what each step is, why each step matters, how you execute on each step, and how each step builds on the next. So, the first step is having game. This is the simplest step, but it's also probably the most difficult step when it comes to playing, playing basketball at the professional level. Now, we know that there are a lot of basketball enthusiasts, I guess we can call them players, who play basketball and they post their videos online, maybe on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, whatever platform happens to be out there and whatever comes out in the future. I want y'all to understand that playing, when I'm talking about playing basketball and playing at the pro level, we're talking about the hierarchy of basketball that has traditionally always existed. So the way that I learned it and the way that I still teach it is the first level is you play at you no know, playground, pickup games, or what you see people doing on YouTube, playing one-on-one -on -one or just working out. So you do that. Then the next level is you go play what we call under the whistle, which means you play where there's a referee, a scoreboard, is an actual game and stats are being kept and there are four quarters in the game or two halves and there's a you try to win the game by the time the game is over when there are referees in the gym and maybe you have coaches and another team of players that maybe you've never seen before in your life that's a different level than just playing pickup with people that you see every day and is a completely loose unstructured game so that's the second level under the whistle the next level is you want to play for your school so if you're in high school age then you play for your high school and then you go on and play in college or if you're already college level then you want to play college basketball why college is the next level is because it's a lot of structure when you talk about playing college basketball. High school, basketballs, high school basketball teams run the gamut because there are so many of them and they are not as uh, regulated, but college basketball is structured. Even at the D3 level, at the JUCO level, all the way up to the D1 level, there's structure there. There's a coach there, y'all have practice all the time, y'all run plays, you gotta go to class at the same time, be on the team, and there's a lot of stuff that you have to do. You have to be at a certain level to play college basketball. Everybody who plays high school ball or plays pickup ball on the street is not gonna get an opportunity to play college ball. So college ball, and to actually excel in college basketball, you also have to be very good because you have to fit into the system, but also be able to do your thing while within a basketball team system that you don't have 100% control over. That's why that's the next level. Now the thing about college, if you happen to have a scholarship, then even if you didn't have a scholarship, actually, if you could play at the, the D3 level or the JUCO level, if your team in college is charging people money to come to the games and watch. I remember when I was at D3 uh, Penn State Altoona, my school would charge like $2 for anybody who wasn't a student to come to the game. Most of the people who came to the game were students, but anybody who wasn't a student would pay $2 to come in the gym. Now, $2 is nothing. I don't think that money was funding anything, but the whole point is they were able to charge money for people to come and watch us play. Now you're somewhere, somehow, there's money involved in you playing basketball and a structured money involved. I'm not talking about playing one on, playing a five on five and betting a thousand dollars on it. I'm talking about their structure there. And if you happen to be under a scholarship playing college basketball, now the school has basically said, hey, your skills are worth the cost of tuition, room and board. Now, of course, we know we have a whole conversation about whether athletes should be getting more money or should they get paid a salary or can they make money off their likeness? Only a small percentage of college basketball and football players are actually going to make money off their likeness and image because not all college basketball and football players are famous enough to make money off of their likeness. And a lot of college basketball and football programs, the majority of them are not super big revenue producers. They actually cost money to the school more than they make money for the school. The ones that you know about are the ones that make money for the school, but all the ones that you don't know about, they're not making the school any money. At best case, many of them are breaking even. So it's not that every college basketball player, we're speaking strictly about basketball, every college basketball player is not worth money. But if you get a scholarship, then the school is saying, all right, you play basketball for us, we're going to cover what it costs to go to school here. And that could be anywhere from, what, twenty to $100,000 in a year. So now you are actually trading your skills in basketball for money. So that's another level from playing anywhere else. And then, of course, the highest level is the professional level. At the professional level, you are also trading your skills for money. But now the money goes in your pocket instead of your skills just 
covering the cost of other things that you otherwise would have had to pay for, like school, tuition, room, and board. So now in the professional level, not only are you getting things paid for, your travel's paid for, your housing is paid for, your food is paid for, your communications probably back home is paid for, like your internet connections, things like that, you have an apartment, all those things are paid for, and you are actually drawing a check. You are getting a full-time salary just to play basketball. This is the highest level of the game because your full-time job is being a basketball player on a team with structure, with a coach. There's an organization there. There's money being made or lost based on the performance of the team. There are fans who come and pay like real money to go to these games and watch the games. The referees are getting paid. Your opponents are getting paid. Everybody's making money in the professional game. There are people and everybody involved many of them, this is their full-time job running that organization. So the professional basketball level is the highest level because everybody is at work to feed their family and to feed themselves as a full-time job as opposed to any other level of the game. And if we talk about, let's say on the internet, maybe somebody can make a full-time living posting content to the internet. There was a time when I was doing that and a lot of it was centered around basketball. But at the same time, I did not call myself I was a professional basketball player because I was playing overseas. I wasn't a pro basketball player because I was playing basketball and putting it on YouTube and making money from it. No, that's a, being a professional YouTuber and you happen to be playing basketball. So there's a difference between the two. A professional basketball player means you are getting a salary specifically for playing basketball games. All right, if you're getting a salary for posting videos, then you are a professional video maker and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're talking right here, the hierarchy of basketball, the highest level is being a professional player where you're on a team, your, your travel is paid for, you're getting stamps in your passport, you are playing in games, actual games or actual stats, and your performance in those games determines whether you continue to have a job or not have a job. That is a huge difference from what you can do on the internet where you're just getting making money off your popularity, which again, there's nothing wrong with that, but here we're talking about being a professional player at the pro level, five on five with a coach, Y'all know what I'm talking about. So these are the hierarchies. And I explained all that for y'all to understand. The number one uh, thing you need to understand about becoming a pro basketball player, the first step in overseas basketball blueprint process is you gotta have game. It takes a lot of game to play professional basketball simply because everybody can't get that job. Like anybody can be an Instagrammer or a YouTuber. Anybody with a camera and an idea and who you can be entertaining enough to draw an audience, you can be an Instagram or a YouTuber. There's no limit to how many people can do it. There's a limit to how many people can play professional basketball because there is a limit to how many teams exist. And there's a limit to the number of roster spots and there's a limit to the number of import players, meaning players who are not from that country but playing in that country who can be on the roster. And that costs money. So that's why it's a whole other level than anything you can do anywhere else and even separating from other professions like being a, a doctor or a lawyer anybody could technically do that if you get the if you pass all the qualifications but basketball there could be 10 guys who are good enough to play pro skill wise but only five jobs so there are going to be five players who are very disappointed because even though their skill wise good enough they will not have a job opportunity or you could say if you're looking at it the other way the relative way well they're not good enough because if they were then they would have got the jobs but you understand what I'm saying. So the first level, you gotta have enough skill. You gotta have game. You gotta be able to do whatever it is you do on that court. If you're a shooter, a dunker, you're an athlete, you're a defensive stopper, you're a ball handler, whatever it is you do, you gotta bring that game. You gotta bring that game consistently. You gotta bring that game at a high level and you gotta be able to bring it when you're going against other people who are trying to take the same spot that you're trying to take. And that ain't for everybody. But I want y'all to understand, this is the first step in the overseas basketball blueprint. And always remember what I talk about that basketball is a performance and results based business. It is not, yes, relationships do matter. Yes, marketing matters. Yes, selling yourself matters. Getting seen and known matters. We're gonna talk about that later on in the process. But if you do not have game, if you can't get on that court and perform, there is no amount of marketing or salesmanship or entertainment value or advertising or anything that can fight down the fact that you didn't perform. So you gotta have game. That's the first step in the blueprint. Next, we're gonna talk about step two in the overseas basketball blueprint. Stay tuned for that. Work on your game. Dre, oh yeah, one more thing. You don't got the overseas basketball blueprint, 237 page book. I made this book free so that you don't even have to make a decision about whether you wanna get it or not. All you do is cover the shipping. The book is already paid for. Go to balloverseas.com, claim your free copy of this book. While supplies last before we, run, before we run out of trees to print this thing on again, balloverseas.com if you're ready to play professional basketball right now. Make sure you got that game part ready. Work on your game. Dre all day.